Hey, uh, I'm Alec Empire, a Thai Teenage Riot. We ask all of you uh, to send in questions. Um, it was a great debate yesterday on CryptoCat and Twitter. And a lot of people sent in email questions. Um, we also included some questions from another questionnaire in August that we couldn't uh, answer because we were in the studio and we were touring. It was getting really busy and we thought, okay, why don't we just, you know, in include all of the questions into one video uh, answering message thing so, you know, everybody can watch it and maybe some of you who um, uh, have maybe the same questions now have the answers from other people's questions. <laughs> okay, so I, I just, I'm trying to answer all of them but we got like so many um, and some of them, of course, are like the same, like if we're going on a tour and stuff like that. Uh, so, um, obviously, uh, I can't answer every question. But I'm trying to answer as ma many as I can, okay? So, let's start, uh, yeah, from the beginning. Matt Smith is asking, I have a question for ATR. Where's your favorite place to see a show or a concert for your entertainment? That's a really good question um, because I have seen many shows in many cities, uh, sometimes when we played festivals, uh, you know, all over the world. Sometimes I would see a band, uh, you know, maybe let's say in Japan or something like that, uh, that I've seen in Berlin before, like three months before. And in this different country, it totally blew me away. Uh, while in Berlin, it didn't grab me so much. Uh, but this can also be vice versa. So it, I think it depends more on the band actually and on the musicians and the audience. Um, places are important, but I wouldn't um, put too much into like, you know, where is the show happening? I think it's more about the audience and more about the, uh, the musicians to create an atmosphere uh, in a special place, you know. Um, okay, then somebody called, I don't know how to pronounce it, G. Calcut, Calcut, something like that. Um, what makes the best atmosphere at a gig or festival for you? What gives you the biggest buzz? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, what I personally love the most is when I feel that there are people in the audience or the whole audience that is there for the music. Uh, this sounds really weird maybe to some people because of course everybody goes to a concert to hear music. But the thing is, we all have seen these kinds of shows where people are there maybe for the wrong reasons. There's maybe like hype going on or something and you have people in the crowd who don't actually know all the songs and they don't maybe know the context and of course they react not naturally. You know, they think they have to like it and you know, this is not, you know, we don't really like that so much. Um, we can deal with that uh, <laughs> and it's, it's usually it works out fine and to be fair like if you're in the crowd you might not notice the difference so much but um, sometimes I just love when when I know you know and this is you know is something it's like it can be uh, big shows or small shows you know sometimes if you play like a tiny club and you know like everybody knows exactly uh, what the meaning of the songs are and stuff this can be really great this can happen also at a big show. So, you know, I would say, you know, the biggest buzz is that for me. You know? And I, I'm sure it's for the rest of the band, it's the same. Um, Davis J.R. Young is asking, does the infamous ATR Alec Empire TR909 still work? If so, how much abuse has it been through? For those of you who don't know, the TR909 drum machine is a drum machine by Roland from the 80s that we use basically in every song. Like all the drums you hear are created with this one drum machine. Um, it's a classic drum machine uh, that is, you know, very popular in like techno music. Uh, but you can, you know, it, it really depends like how you program. Other musicians use it too, like, you know, for example. Madonna or Phil Collins or you know like all kinds of uh, artists from the 80s but then in the 90s it was quite popular too so it depends like if you if you uh, 
make it sound hard and distorted. It can sound like a Thai teenage riot, but if you, you know, kind of make it clean and you polish it, it can sound like a, like a house record or something. So um, yes, it still works and it's still the exact same machine that we were recording our first songs with. Um, and how much abuse has it been through? Quite a lot, you know, it's <laughs> been on all the tours and I think maybe you've seen some of the pictures, images that we uploaded to Tumblr or Facebook or something. Um, it's also on the cover of our Best Of uh, album, which was released in, I think, 2006 or something. Um, so, yeah, it, it, by now it looks like uh, something that could be in a museum or so. Uh, but it still works and I love the sound. There is something about it with analog um, drum machines um, that the sound slightly changes the whole time. So it keeps, in my opinion, it keeps a beat, like a repetitive beat, sounding more alive. It's subtle stuff, like, you know, some people don't know, notice the difference, but I do, and I think a lot of other musicians and DJs uh, notice that too. And probably people in the audience know, know, know that too. It's, they, it's more like a feeling thing than something where you point out, oh, here at this moment it sounds different. You know what I mean? So uh, if you can use an, a 909 or even an 808, uh, it's, I love those machines. Oh, but there are also other people right, who do great analog machines. You know, the X-Base stuff is great, like from Yomox, and there's a lot of also modules uh, for modular synths where you can do great drum sounds as well. You know, but I'm sure like people can do digital sounds also in, in a good way. I think it's like how you use it. It's, that's uh, really important. Um, Sarah Doss. The world is dying and music is, is killing herself. So let's talk about something really important. Alec, are you a sexual serious question? Women of the world need to know that. No, I'm not asexual. I hope not. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. It's, it's just a private thing. So, you know, I don't know how to answer that really. Um, I also don't know if the world is actually dying and music is killing herself. Uh, I don't exactly know what you meant by that. Um, I feel exactly the opposite. I feel the world is not dying and we can do a lot of changes uh, to it and we'll come out fine. Uh, uh, same with music. There's a lot of shit out there that it's down to us musicians and the fans to you know, support stuff that we love and not manufactured uh, bullshit that's meaningless. Um, then there's another, um, ah yeah, that's, that's the next one is by, that's, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's, I don't know, it sounds Russian to me, I'm not so sure. Sviatoslav Volyegov or something. S-V-Y-A-T-O-S-L-A-V V-O-L-Y-E-G-O-F. Uh, v, sorry. <laughs> Crazy names. Uh, maybe it's also just a, a sort of online name. So he's asking, or she, are going to make a new digital hardcore track like the ones from the 90s? I guess there's a U missing in there. Um, that's the thing. Um, digital hardcore um, in the 90s was something that you know, that was created in the context of its time. And that's something that, that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Um, when you make electronic music like we do, and you program the music on an Atari computer, you can actually recreate stuff really easily. It's not, it, that's not really a challenge to, to repeat something again. Um, but, you know, I've, I wouldn't never say no, it's, it's just like when you progress and you want to do something else, it, it feels weird to do something again that you've already done. It's, it, that can lead to boredom. And the weird thing is if you do it um, as, a, as a musician, if you keep doing the same thing again and you get bored, I think people hear that in the music too. Um, <clears throat> so what I suggest always 
if somebody loves digital hardcore, like the 90s digital hardcore, like the first you know, generation of those musicians, check out the records. Like it's, I think, um, it's in my opinion timeless stuff. And not only a Teenage Riot of course and Eric Empire, like all the other artists that were doing great stuff. Um, there, you know, for example, there's uh, Christoph de Babylon, he just put out on Bandcamp a collection of unreleased 90s tracks. Um, you know, if you love that sound, you know, sometimes people have unreleased stuff and yeah, it will probably remind you of those times. Um, um, so, but then um, there might be some, some point in the future where we go, hey, this is actually fun again. Like, we can add something to it. For us, what we do now is an evolution from that 90s sound. Um, like us as humans, you know, like we, we grow up, like we grow older, we, we develop, we see more things, we, you know, we listen to other music and, you know. So you, you want to also do that for the fans, you don't want to just do the same thing over and over again. Um, so Dirk Becker um, is asking in German, and maybe I'm answering this in German. Wann uh, spielt ihr endlich mal wieder in Berlin? Gute Frage. Wir würden uh, gerne uh, sehr bald wieder in Berlin spielen. Bis jetzt steht noch kein Datum fest, aber ich bin sicher, dass wir es machen werden. Also wenn wir irgendwo in Deutschland spielen, werden wir sicherlich in Berlin spielen. Also dafür werde ich mich persönlich uh, einsetzen bei der Band. Ich bin ja der einzige Deutsche, der hier noch äh, übrig ist ähm, und deshalb ist es auch nicht immer so ganz so logisch, dass wir sofort immer in Deutschland spielen. Aber natürlich äh, müssen wir in Berlin ein Konzert machen, auch für die neue Platte und so. Äh, werden wir aber ankündigen, ähm, auch auf, äh, auf unserer Website und überall, also das werdet ihr mitbekommen. Musik